Okay, here we are back in Sentinels of the Multiverse. So, it is that time. No rest for old men or heroes. So, this is one I was not really looking forward to doing. And truth be told, I was talking to Crimson, I think, last week about doing the ultimate version of this. But for now, we just have to do the challenge one, which is still quite a bit of a time sink. So, if you don't know, you're up against Spite Weaver. First Spite, then Gloom Weaver. At the Tomb of Ra. And you have the old guy team here. And don't worry, they can hold their own. Ra inspected the grave. The former occupant had clawed his way out. I'm getting to... Fixel's, Fixer's knuckles cracking interrupted him. No tropes. The man grunted around his cigar. Crown Ranger drew his six gun. Scholar sighed. Players wish the world would stay saved. Haka laughed in response. So we need Mini Pack 2 for Scholar, Rook City for Fixer, Infernal Relics for. Actually, Spite is part of Rook City too, and then Infernal Relics for Gloomweaver. I believe. The Tomb of Ra is part of that. And then you need Shattered Timelines for Chrono Ranger. Designed by Brad Bell. I think he did another one, but. I'm not going to go looking for it right now. Maybe at the end of the game, if this doesn't take too long, we're just going to jump right in. So you get that little silhouette to tell you that there's something coming afterward if you didn't know how challenge mode Spite Weaver worked. My tools are weapons in my hands. This fight will end swiftly. Well, let's begin. So he's going to dish out his five cards. He plays his safe house. And he draw plays an innocent bystander. First card, we'll go with door number three. Mindfire. Lost Child. So the great news is, while well, Haka takes a nice beating here, Mindfire doesn't do anything on turn one. It's the rest of the turns that you have to worry about. Nope, we're not going to discard here. Nope, we're not going to take the hit. We are just going to play these crowbars, and we're going to do something that's probably a little counterintuitive. So, crowbar, show all targets, hit Scholar for two, and then hit Spite for three. So we deal one extra point of damage by hitting Scholar first. Don't worry, Scholar can take it. So, we're going to do Flesh and Iron, and then the reason why I hit him is because that allows us to heal here, otherwise we don't get the hit point. So it's still effectively like a net two, I guess, but the thing is it takes away one more from him. So, we're going to skip those. We will play Eye on the Prize, looking for a better card. Ping him for one. Hey, right, there we go. So let's play the bow. I'm going to try to save the other eye on the prize in case I can do the, um... Crud, I'm drawing a blank, the hunter and hunted combo. So, in case you're wondering, if you saw the Spite Weaver game Crimson, Phoenix and I did, we brought Chrono Ranger in, it backfired horribly, we're going to try to do it right this time. Anyway, we will discard three cards. We do not need Haka Battle, Haka Shielding, or Rampage. Nope. So we're going to play the Vitality Search, which will give me two hit points plus a card. And then we are going to crush him. So we'll pass on Ra taking this hit, even though we could heal it up right away. We take one point of damage because I'm going to play Summon Staff. Actually, no. I will save the Summon Staff and I'll play Imbued Fire. So we're still going to play Summon Staff anyway, but we're not going to play the Staff itself. Okay, we'll play two Summon Staffs. Have a your way game. And then Imbued Fire because I want to play the Staff when I will... Well, when I don't need the hit points. And then the Imbued Fire will boost my teammate's power, so we can try to wrap this up a little more swiftly. Overall, for Spite, if we don't manage to get... well... If you cannot play a lot of victims for him, like out of turn, to cause him to flip prematurely before all of his drugs come into play, don't flip him. That's my best advice for you. So, don't destroy anything that's going to get destroyed by Mind Fire. We are going to play card number five. Demon's Kiss. Good Samaritan. So because of that, like, there's no way these guys can give him additional card plays or even force more. Well, the only way we get more victims out is if we chained Good Samaritan into Good Samaritan into Good Samaritan, which isn't going to happen. So we actually don't really have to 
try to rescue people. <laughs> as cruel as that may sound. We're going to use Meditation here, and we will go into our deck. I want Driving Mantis here, because that will redirect the poison damage that he deals. And... Even if I hit Scholar, it's going to have the same result, I believe. So, yeah. Let's just Crowbar Spite. Stop there. In case you're wondering why it had the same result, you deal one point of damage to him, which is what Strike has anyway, so it's not going to affect the modifier in any way, shape, or form. So... Yeah, I just want this out of the way. I'll take the two points of damage. We will get rid of... Hold fast. I'll use Transmuted Recovery to heal that off, as well as take a new card. Or two. And why not just heal up even more? We're at max HP, people. You guys all thought I was crazy with that crowbars on turn one thing, didn't you? So anyway, we need to mitigate his damage. I am going to... Okay, he doesn't have that out yet. So deck, dart, ping him for two. And now we're going to start him with the dart thor, so we don't have to worry about demon's kiss or mind fire damage. Dead or alive... I think it's ultimate target that gives you the extra power play. That one's the preferred one. Um, we're going to play Savage Mana here so that we have stuff to pick up later on. It's basically just like a sacrifice of sorts, except it's not sacrifice. It's just getting picked up. Drew a Mere. And this is going to go a little bit to waste, but I want as much damage amplification as I can get. So we'll hit him with the Pyre for four. Okay, it was a bystander. Ursh comes out, he's gonna discard a bunch of crap. Let's go with number one. Okay, so lab raid. We can redirect this into him. One point of damage for the other guys, and then we'll have Scholar take this since he has all that damage reduction. This is negated. As is this. Thing is, once he plays... God, I forgot which drug... You can't even see his drugs, I think. If you click on the safe house... No. Nope, that won't let you see him. One of them has damage amplification. I believe that's the pickup card. That one will get to the point where the dart thrower isn't going to save us. Anyway, no to the discard... So if I overdrive here, I'm going to take some damage. I think I'm better off saving the overdrive. And then redirect this into him. It's only going to be one point, sadly. It's still a point. And we drew an overdrive anyway. Oh well. So we will get rid of... I'm thinking Grace. Bring what you need, and we need to start fishing for cards. So I'll take Keep Moving and Truth Seeker. Denied. So the only thing I have here is Dead or Alive. This will give me a little bit of healing, and we are going to ping him with the darts to mitigate some damage. Okay, he can't discard, but we can play the mirror. Clove him upside the head, take the extra card. One point of toxic damage isn't too bad. here. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna hit him with the pyre. I was contemplating throwing the stick at him, but... Okay, I drew Inferno. That one's even better. Swinging blades. That sucks. At least they get destroyed here. Um, let's go with card number four. Okay, that's the pickup card. Yeah, boost his damage. So... We can play the staff again. We can play this again. What does Chrono have to do this turn? Not much. Could do an eye on the prize and fish for something better, but... I think I'm gonna pick up the bow. Good Samaritan. Painful man. So this is going to be two points into him. Why wasn't that... Oh, right. Okay, I see. I was thinking of the wrong move, in case you're wondering. So, we will do an overdrive here, since I already have one in the hand for later. Hit him for this. Stop there. So that became two points of damage due to the dart thrower, which we can bounce into him. This one I can't evade. Look for a solid liquid. Nope. Keep moving. So we will get a flushed iron out. I can use alchemical redirection to do a lot of blocking here. The one thing to keep in mind is now that you have that card in play, if you flip him, Scholar is dead. I'll take the Proverbs and the Keep Moving. Hmm, there's the third flush. So, eye on the prize, ping him for two. Got the whole gang. Eye on the prize, ping him for two. Okay, there's a card I needed. Toss the bow back out so we can pick it up later. And since Scholar's gonna absorb everything this turn, there's no point using the dart thrower. Let's hit him with the bow so we can deal a little bit more damage. Keep everything fire elemental, though. <laughs> Danny boy, there's a card I'm not gonna use here. Toss out the Mary. And my answer is no. So I need to play the staff once again so I can get my damage boost. Hit him, knock him down to 17. Okay, can I kill him this coming turn? My answer is no. Chemise comes out. Okay, that's good. He'll kill both of those. Steer this into spite. So, let's see. Actually, hold on. I can do that combo, can't I? Okay, yeah. So, first thing we're picking up are the crowbars. Next, we will pick up Savage Mana and the Mary. Out comes the Lost Child. Ouch. Order here doesn't matter since Scholar is going to block everything. We'll have driving... Actually, it's not going to matter, is it? We'll still do driving mantis. That way you can see that he'll block his own attack. Nope. Nope. So we're going to play the jack handle. And the reason for that being, you ask? Well, you're going to see in a second. So, jack handle. In case you're wondering why I did that, was our G manipulation, I wanted that salvage yard. So in case you're wondering... Actually, I can't show you yet. 
So I need to sacrifice two cards here. Transmutative. I need this. I can probably get by without the keep moving. So let's see, if I were to do Sudden Contract, that would ping him for a little bit. I'm wondering if I can actually flip him without doing this combo. In case you're wondering what it is, Proverbs and Axioms have Mr. Fixer hit himself. Jack Handle doesn't let him do that, he'll go offensive instead. He'll hit Spite for three or four, I don't remember which one offhand. I have to actually see how much damage Proverbs does. Because if I were to do it this way, I do the Sudden Contract. Everyone had hit themselves and then they take poison damage from him. So that would be one point. I'd hit him with... Ultimate target. Nah, we'll just do it this way. So everyone draws. <laughs> By any means. So, first one you want to go is going to be Chrono. So the reason for that being is he's going to hit himself for four, courtesy of the Imbued Fire. Have him do the Dart Thrower so everyone takes less damage by extension. That's also going to be the chip away so that he, uh, well, everyone else gets to hit him for full. Order here no longer matters. Damage yourself. Psych. And then you get to hit him anyway with the Jack Handle. Redirect that into himself. So we're gonna have him hit himself. Wink, wink. Bring what you need. Expect the worst isn't too helpful here. That's why I'm not taking it in case you're wondering, because I think those are the three bottom cards. Raw will hit himself. Luckily, I don't have that flame barrier out because that would be pretty nasty. Actually, hold on. I think I have to. Ah, oh, I messed up. You should have Haka go first. Actually, I probably didn't need to put on the staff. Fire might have done it. Cursed Acolyte. That's gonna be bad for Chrono. So, yeah, he's down to three hit points. He's the only guy who can't reliably heal either. So, for Fixer, Salvage Yard allows you to play Overdrive that's in the trash. If you remember, we put one in there. This will also give us all the equipment cards we've discarded up to this point, which is actually a pair of Grease Guns. So we will play this. Hopefully you guys don't hear my brother screaming in the background at the top of his lungs, because he doesn't know how to speak like a normal person. So, that's two strikes with the jack handle. Cursed Acolyte. Actually, you know what? I have two copies of Proverbs done. Oh god, this glitch. So, when this happens, hit main menu. Go to continue game. Took so long for Mini-Pack 4 to come out. It would have been nice if, you know, they actually put some work into bug fixing. But hey, we already paid for this game, right? So we need to discard two things. I will get rid of to cut loose and hold fast. And then as I mentioned, Proverbs. Bloody Knuckles. If I can get Ground Pound or Offensive Transmutation, I can actually use that. 
But anyway, have him hit himself. Wink, wink. Oh, wait. And then have him go again. Once again, you're going to hit yourself. Wink, wink. Bring what you need. So this is just fodder for my flesh next turn. Him, he needs to heal. Otherwise, he's dead. Same for him. And just play it safe. We'll have Ra heal too. And then we'll heal a little bit more. Because you never be too safe. So, once you have the hat, there's pretty much no reason not to play it. And by any means... Increase damage, don't I? I actually want the other one first. Ultimate target, slap that on him. Ping him for two. Pouch of bones, give him damage reduction in case you're wondering. And then I need to make sure he doesn't kill us, so I'm hitting him with a dart thrower to mitigate some of his damage. The thing I'm worried about is if the other relics come out because that turns all of his stuff into AoE and it gets less fun from there. By the way, for the pouch, if Anubis comes out, you don't want to kill that because then Anubis starts swinging at crap. Not good. So, summon staff. Summon staff. Okay. So if I were just to play Tornado straight, that would be... It really doesn't matter. We'll play the staff so we get the healing. I should stop saying their names. Maybe that'll work. So when a target enters play, the bone, the pouch heals it. So, it'll heal someone. Who got hit? The second lowest? Was it Haka? Yeah, it was Haka. So, he's not going to attack any more this turn. As a result, I'm going to fire off the bow. Could use it to kill the zombie, I guess, but there's other ways to kill the zombie. Just make sure to keep it fire. So... In order to make sure no one dies, we have to use the Grease Gun here. So I don't get any power plays or card draws. And as I mentioned, we're going to throw these away. And to go offensive, I am going to play the Truth Seeker. for three. So, I don't actually think there's any reason to go for that, because he's just going to keep hitting Scholar, and Scholar's just going to keep absorbing it. I can never remember. Does he actually have any ongoing destruction? Because I want to say maybe one of his cultists does. Yeah, he does. The pins. But the thing is, you have to consent to it. So, we'll play it by any means. And since we're safe from damage here, Hunter and Hunted. Remember, I have another Grease Gun, it's just I need to draw a Ground Pound and an Offensive Transmutation. 12 points of damage. I'm going to play Dominion so I get card draws. I kind of need as much as I can get. Next turn I may play Haka Restoration just for a surge of healing. So, Tornado time. Tornado's going to deal more damage than Pyre. Judgment of Anubis. Grimoire. Can't do anything. So, real quick. Both ground pounds are still in the deck. 
So, let's play the other Grease Gun, I guess. We have a nice number of targets out there. Let's get rid of the Expect the Worsts. And then we're going to do Truth Seeker because there's only one card left in the deck. So I do wish to draw, so that way I can shuffle and get new cards. No one to hold fast. Um, so right here, my best bet is to just toss out more bounties so that I can get more damage right here. So I'm going to slap no executions on the pouch of bones. That way, if it gets destroyed, it goes in the deck. Put the whole gang on gloomy doesn't really matter. This isn't the right variant where that does count. Compounded bow, hit him for 8. That'll cause him to flip. He loses his damage reduction here. Keep it fire. Terrible tech, sublime. Thinking Tomoko will give me a little bit more survivability. If I don't, the thing is, playing either one of the Haka cards is going to give me a card draw. I could play Dominion; that'll give me an extra card draw. Yeah, I'm gonna play Haka Restoration because I need to find Ground Pound. So we're gonna get rid of Enduring Intercession. Punish the weak is garbage here. In case you're wondering, yes, I'm going to throw away most of my hand. These are the only cards I'm going to save. Slide him for four. Tomoko. Ground pound! <laughs> oh man. So let's see, I could do an Inferno or I could just Fire Blast. I'm gonna do an Inferno because I want to deal a little bit of AoE. Pouch of Bones is the. are the Grimoire. So I want to kill this because that'll cause him to hit the book. Ah, uh, that caused him to heal too. That sucks. And Nemesis bonus. Akana. So that means Scorched Earth is an option, but I think I have another Inferno. Grease Gun stops some cold. Skip this because he can't hurt you without Grease Gun is out. Out comes the freaking drum, so he has all three relics. Wow, man. So, we're going to Ground Pound here. As a result, we can play Bloody Knuckles. Four damage across the board. Five, two... Oh, Gloomy, I think. Because of the one bounty thing. As for here... We'll get rid of Hold Fast and Solid to Liquid. I'm going to play Transmuted Recovery because this gives me cards. Got to keep moving. Don't dismiss anything. I may need that next turn. So I'm going to do Truth Seeker because I'm still fishing for cards. And I was hoping for a Grace Under Fire. So we're going to skip here. He still has another ground pound in here. Except I threw away the cards that could get that to me. <laughs> oh boy. No bounties. How many bounties are... Okay, kill on sight, screw it. We'll do a terrible tech strike. Hit him for ten. Then nine. 
Fixer doesn't need the pipe wrench. Scholar doesn't need form of energy. I do not need Danny Boy. Don't need two Tomokos. We'll get rid of Flesh of the Sun God. I could do a Flame Spike here, actually. Will that deal more? We'll see you in a moment. So I got kill on site anyway. Displaced armory, sun contract, just doing my job. Get to ping him for nine more. Then we'll use the bow. And this is the kind of crazy damage output Chrono Ranger can do, but the thing is you have to get him set up. And it takes some time, as you can tell. I can't even see how long this video has been going yet. Ground pound, discard two cards, we'll get rid of elbow smash and Tomoko because I want to play Dominion next turn. Or if I draw something cool, like another I don't know, ground pound. Damn it! Okay, so if I scorch the earth here, that will kill Akana, which will give him a card draw, which could be a ground pound. Could go with a flame spike that deals three, four damage, knock him down to fourteen. Yeah, flame spike's just better. So if I hit him with Pyre, that's one, two, three, four, five, puts... Yeah, Pyre's fine with me. Trial of Anubis, Trial of Anubis, Trial of Anubis. <laughs> Judgment, I mean. So... They didn't get to do anything, but that's out of my way. That's the important thing. Skip. Skip. So he can heal a little bit if he plays a target. Stupid pouch of bones. Oh, that only heals zombies, I guess. I thought they healed everything. Oh, it only works when a zombie enters play. So, let's focus on our balance with a little bit of harmony here. And I'm not just gonna I'm not gonna draw this out, just knock him out, fixer. So there you have it. I should also mention if you encounter that glitch that does not compromise your mint, that's like the one good measure that they put in. So with that, Chrono is the only guy in single digit hit points, everyone else was fairly healthy. And if I let this go to his uh, turn, by any means would have ticked, gave him one point of health, and then he would have been double digits. So that is a time sink. So I want to say this guy developed a different one. That's Powerhound. Brad Bell, yeah. So he did the swing one. Didn't even notice that there were two team villain games so close together. Oh well. So it's time for me to actually get my rest. With that, I am out of here. I'm the Hero of Light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.